We are now approaching 10 months of the ongoing slaughter faced by the Palestinians. It's been beamed across social media, meaning we can witness for ourselves exactly what's been unfolding, including the claims and counterclaims made by both sides. As such, there's been numerous things that we have learned. Here are just a list of 10 things, but honestly, I could have listed far more. So what are the 10 things that we have learned over the last 10 months? Number 10. Hasbara was a term many of us were unfamiliar with at the beginning of this conflict, yet it's been employed by Israel for decades, probably even before its creation. So what's Hasbara? It's a Hebrew word meaning to explain or explaining events or actions. It's basically Israel's communication strategy. In other words, it's what Israel calls its propaganda. We've seen it in full swing in the current onslaught in Gaza. For instance, the excessive focus on October 7th, giving the impression that the violence that took place came out of a vacuum. Do you condemn what Hamas did? Do you support Hamas? After October 7th, the million dollar question and the key talking point for Western journalists and commentators was, do you condemn Hamas? Claims that Hamas uses human shields, that's why they have to target hospitals, schools and bakeries. Similarly, when Al Ahli Hospital was hit, Israeli spokesman claimed that it was initially an accident, only later to claim that it was Hamas rockets. Again, when Israel hit a refugee tent burning alive Palestinian refugees, they claimed it was a Hamas arms depot that caught fire and then exploded, causing the subsequent explosion and fire of the tents. Asper is an attempt to reframe the conflict, obfuscate, to create confusion as who is responsible or simply sell a lie to justify the actions of Israel. For instance, whenever a massive number of women and children are killed, we constantly hear the phrase, war is hell, and analogies to bombing of Dresden. Hasper is a big topic and I'll probably do a separate video but this communication strategy including utilizing paid Zionist shills or AI to comment against pro-Palestinian accounts is clearly a form of propaganda aimed against anything that seems to be critical of Israel and even slightly pro-Palestinian. Number nine, we have been told constantly that Hamas uses human shields and thus that's why they have to kill so many innocent civilians, including targeting schools, hospitals, mosques, churches in Gaza. But we actually saw clear image of a wounded Palestinian man tied to the bonnet of an Israeli armed vehicle as it traveled through Gaza. It's clearly a case of using human shield because unlike the IDF, Palestinians won't kill civilians because they see a military target. And by the way, this isn't new. Israel has done this numerous times before where they've used Palestinian children and tied them to as human shields to protect Israeli occupation forces from being attacked. Pretty disgusting and a point noted by international organizations. Number eight, Israel kills unarmed civilians carrying white flags. This has been caught by British news media of an unarmed man carrying a white flag trying to reach his mother and brother trapped on another area. He was shot while clearly displaying a white flag. Again, this isn't the first time. There's been numerous occasions over the years where Israeli soldiers have killed innocent civilians carrying white flags. Reports done by Amnesty International and others clearly document the numerous cases. Number seven, the AI programs determined that the best time to bomb these targets were at night when they were at home with their families. The AI program determined that for a low level target, 15 to 20 civilians could be killed. Remember, this is at night, knowing that the target was at home with his family, including children. For a senior Hamas target, the AI determined that 100 plus civilians could be killed in order to kill that one target. It's considered a war crime, but to be honest, Israel doesn't care about that. Number six, it's now pretty much fact that Israel killed their own civilians on October 7th. This has been reported even by Israeli newspapers like Haaretz. And this isn't just about fog of war where Israeli forces accidentally killed their own civilians. No. Israel has a military policy called the Hannibal Doctrine. The policy permits the use of heavy firepower to thwart any abduction, prioritizing the prevention of capture over the, their soldiers or civilians' immediate safety. Basically, Israel determines it's better to have their own civilians killed than have them captured in order to allow the enemy to gain a strategic or psychological advantage over them.
The actual numbers are not clear, with some claiming it was just a few instances, whereas others claiming that it was a significant number of including Israeli civilians who were actually killed by Israeli forces themselves. Number five, we have witnessed an unstinting support by Western states for Israel to levels where many are thinking really how powerful is the Zionist lobby in each of these countries. We've seen now the amount of money being spent by groups like APAC or in the UK we have seen Labour Friends of Israel or Conservative Friends of Israel etc lobbying Labour and Conservative in order to gain preferential treatment or policies for Israel lobbying providing funding for politicians and giving them all expense paid holidays to Israel it's next level influence on western politicians to the point that you'd think it's Israel first and not America or Britain first but more than this is how the west sees Israel as some sort of bulwark ally in the middle east and with a plausible genocide taking place then these western states are simply complicit in a crime against humanity being perpetrated against the Palestinians number four international law is meaningless the fact that israel can kill those unarmed civilians carrying white flags and use human shields and use ai systems to determine which targets to bomb and how many civilians are to be acceptable as a number of to be killed while targeting these particular enemy combatants as well as the fact that they have destroyed or damaged 60 percent of buildings in gaza use dumb bombs use starvation as a war strategy in fact there's so many violations from the so-called most moral army in the world there's too many to actually list yet they get away with this international law and thus the so-called rule-based order is a complete joke the international order is a joke the idea that the west has any moral or intellectual right to determine how the world should operate has been completely exposed as a scam the west unstunting support providing fighter jets bombs tanks etc as well as moral and political support while israel perpetrates a crime against humanity has exposed a complete farce that liberal order or the rules-based order has the fact is, if a country violates these principles but is aligned with Western states, aligned with their interests, they are ignored. If the country, however, violates these principles but is against Western interests, then they're exposed, sanctions are placed against them and even potentially invaded and occupied in order to claim that they are trying to uphold international law. Even with the provincial ruling of the ICJ of a potential genocide and the potential arrest warrant for Netanyahu through the ICC is only exposed what a farce the so-called liberal order is because without anyone wanting to enforce its rulings, it's worthless. And with America constantly using its veto in the United Nations Security Council and claims that they would potentially invade the Hague if the ICC, either International Criminal Court, ever arrested any target they deemed unacceptable for arrest, just exposes the complete and utter hypocrisy the West has. As the Prophet wasallam said, he mentioned in hadith, the people before you were destroyed because they used to inflict the legal punishments on the poor and yet forgive the rich. So honestly, how can anyone appeal to the international liberal order again as though it's a, anything but a colonial tool used by the powerful states against the weaker states to serve their own Western interests? Number three, the Muslim rulers in the Middle East and beyond have been exposed for being all talk and no action. Egypt helps to maintain the siege on Gaza by helping to protect the Rafah border on behalf of Israel. Erdogan continues to engage in trade deals with Israel through using Greek trade routes so it's not perceived as direct trade. And they also continue to allow their pipelines to remain open that allows oil to flow to Israel. Saudi bans any expression of pro-Palestinian sentiments throughout the country, including banning any symbols of Palestine. And we can all see that they are just waiting for the opportune time to announce normalization with Israel. Jordan, well, what can I say about Jordan? They allowed their own airspace and American military to directly protect Israel when a barrage of slow-moving drones and missiles was sent by Iran against Israel. In fact, Jordan used its own fighter jets to shoot down these Iranian drones. They haven't lifted a finger to protect the Muslims facing the genocide, but are willing to do all they can to protect the Zionist entity. Morocco allowed an Israeli warship to dock in its port after Spain refused them. You know, Spain had more concern for the Palestinians and didn't want to aid the Zionist entity. 
Even Iran undertook a stage response to an attack against the embassy in Damascus, pre-announcing the time of their attacks and sending their slowest missiles and drones, knowing full well that they'd be shot down and intercepted by America and Israel and Britain and over Jordan airspace. And let's be clear, they retaliate not because of what's happening in Gaza, but because of an attack against their own sovereignty. After their attack, had finished with the vast majority of their missiles and drones being intercepted they announced that they would undertake no further action that it was finished for them yet the massacres in gaza still continue it's pretty clear that not one single muslim country comes out looking like they have any real concern for the muslims of palestine and many just look like they are puppets of the west and even pro-zionist number two we learned what a genocide looks like According to the United Nations, a genocide is whether one of these takes place. 1. Killing members of a group. 2. Causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of a group. 3. Deliberately inflicting on a group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. 3. Imposing measures intended to prevent births within a group. 4. Forcibly transferring children of that group to another group. It's clear from the very words of the high-ranking Israeli politicians and military leaders themselves, they seek to inflict a genocide by at least one of these definitions. Netanyahu likened the Palestinians to the Amalekites from the Bible, in which the order of God was supposedly to kill all men, women and children. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant said Israel was fighting human animals in announcing a complete siege on Gaza. Deputy Knesset Speaker Nassim Vatori from the ruling party Likud Party wrote on X, formerly known as Twitter, that Israelis had one common goal, erasing the Gaza Strip from the face of the earth. Israeli Heritage Minister also suggested that Israel should drop a nuclear bomb on Gaza and that there were no uninvolved civilians in the territory. European-based NGO Law for Palestine had a database, in fact, of 500 instances of genocidal statements from Israeli politicians and military personnel. So this isn't just some random musings of deranged few. And with the medical journal Lancet producing research claiming around 186,000 Palestinians have been killed due to direct or indirect slaughter perpetrated by Israel, or that 85% of the population have been displaced, or that other reports suggest that starvation was being used as a weapon of war, or that 60% of the buildings in Gaza have been damaged or destroyed, or that farmlands are being razed to the ground, it's clear there's a deliberate act of inflicting on a group conditions of life calculate to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part i that's the definition of genocide and what we are seeing therefore is an attempted genocide taking place and remember it's not about the execution of the genocide it's about the intent and whether the level of actions are trying to reach that intent and that's what we are seeing number one israel position is weak in the US, the majority of the adults now disapprove of Israeli actions in Gaza, whilst the young in the US, according to the Pew Research, now sympathize more with Palestinian people than the Israeli people. The recent announcement by Israel, Norway and Spain in recognizing Palestinian statehood is in line with public opinion rather than against it. Student protests have swept across the world, particularly across Western campuses, which call upon universities to break their ties with Israel. Israel, particularly their weapons manufacturing companies. Millions have protested throughout the world against Israel's actions. Even former pro-Zionist right-wing commentators are questioning why it's always Israel first. The populations across the global south sympathize ever more with the Palestinians and large proportions of the world's population can see that Israel is just a colonial entity. In fact, in a recent Israeli Knesset vote, the majority of its members voted against any recognition of a Palestinian state, thus underlying it's just about colonialism, land grab, and trying to force the Palestinians away from their homes so they can settle their colonies in their land. Israel, even after 10 months, has been unable to defeat the Palestinian resistance. The Houthis have placed a blockade on the Red Sea, resulting in some Israeli ports declaring bankruptcy. 
Houthis themselves have launched drones that have evaded Israeli defenses and exploded near the US embassy in Tel Aviv. Iran have shown that it has capacity to send missiles from its own territory to Israel. And the Muslim world is boiling over with anger over what they are witnessing being done to their brothers and sisters in Palestine. More than ever, the Zionist project seems unsustainable and without massive amounts of weapons, military aid and political and economic support from the West, it just wouldn't be able to survive on its own. Israel looks weak. It looks small. It has a small Zionist population, in fact, smaller than the Palestinian one, and it's dwarfed by the Muslims in the region. So although the Palestinians continue to suffer, it seems ultimately time is up for this Zionist ethno-racial supremacist state known as Israel. It's not only a case of if, but when the reversal of this Zionist project will occur within the region. That's 10 things that we have learned over the last 10 months.